Hello and welcome to this week's edition of the King of the Nerds UK Vlog, this week sponsored by my thinking hat. Feel free to get your thinking hats now from it honestly looks a lot better in the dark.com. Um, I'm actually going to turn it off so I don't waste the battery, which, sorry to disappoint you all, because I know it looks a lot better with the light on, but, you know, these videos tend to overrun, and I don't know if it can handle the amount of time I'm likely to be blabbering, um, which, speaking of, hoping to be a little more succinct this week, um, editing last week's was just... I could have used slow fades to create the effect of time passing, because that's what happened. Um, so yeah, better than that would be nice. So this week uh, we're talking about episodes um, 5 and 6. Episode 5 was the video game challenge. Immediately Kerry looked very excited. The challenge itself was actually to dr fly um, drones through sort of an obstacle course while the opposing team shot at them. Uh, what we discovered is that Mark is the worst shot ever and that Curtis is pretty mean when it comes to hand-eye coordination. Um, another skill we can add to his ever-growing belt of skills. Um, at this point, he's basically Batman. Um, you know, he's uh, formidable. That's the word I'm going to use. Formidable. They had to create their own mascot this week because there are, again, a lot more members of one team than another. This happened in the American version, and we ended up with Chicken Panda. Virgil, I just want you to know, Chicken Panda loves you, all right? Yeah, everybody loves Chicken Panda. Yeah. Chicken Panda. Um, so it only made sense that in the UK we got Commodore Fox. The Commodore is a mysterious fox cub raised in the sewers of Venice. He was hit by Cupid's arrow and has become a master of marksmanship and falconry. Um, don't know who wins in that fight, if I'm being honest. Something tells me that Chicken Panda is a, um, a, a strong and has, you know, sharp talons, so strength behind bladed things, but Commodore Fox is likely to scheme his way out of it. Only the problem is only about 50% of his schemes will actually, you know, pay off. Um, so yeah, that was, <laughs> that was strange. Um, but surprise, surprise, uh, for that, the, um, the millionth week in a row, uh, Team Defenders of Time won, once again putting Team Evil in a pretty bad situation, because they were all already low on members, three of them, um, and it became evident that it was going to be Mark, Emily, or uh, Yasmin going into the um, nerd-off. What made me laugh was immediately um, Emily and Mark both made it clear they were voting for Yasmin. Now, I think the logic they used was sound they didn't really it, it didn't seem to be for personal reasons it was strategic reasons very sensible strategic reasons and of course Yasmin took it quite personally I don't know why because it's just a game and things got pretty heated in the throne room must be said that's some that's some proper drama that is um between her and Mark we all had to pick someone and at the end of the day it's a strategy and if I had to go up against you I'd pick you because I don't want to go up against okay my point anyway. I don't care that I'm going into the nerd off it was going to happen inevitably it's just you guys are snakes. <laughs> they did it in the least snaky way imaginable. They upfront said, we're voting for you. So to call it snaky is a bit, well, I mean, it's just, it's not, it's not true. Um, they didn't do it behind your back. They didn't sucker punch you with a vote when you, when they told you they were voting for other people. They said, look, we're voting for you. It's the strategic, the most sensible strategic move for us. I mean, that's about as honest and honourable as you can get. They went to the trouble of pre-warning you you were going to be in the nerd off. I think she was just upset to be in the nerd off full stop. Um, but of course, their team had to vote for someone. So, yeah, I don't know what the uh, the issue was there. But the uh, Defenders of Time chose Emily, which I think surprised, well, Team Evil full stop, to be honest with you. I think they were expecting them to choose Mark. But I think the logic was because the, uh, the sort of reward for the Defenders of Time was like a a pizza-based thing where they, they got to fill up on food and uh, then Charlie Brooker stopped by to talk to them. Um, and, you know, they were t saying that, like, well, Mark's just going to win. What's the point of putting him in when he's going to win? And then Charlie Brooker's like, well, take the chance. And I agree with Charlie Brooker. Just, you never know. He might get caught with a bad topic. You might you can get a strong player out that way. Just keep putting him in until he's gone. I, if you want to get rid of a strong player. That's my logic anyway. They didn't go with that way. They went for Emily. And it was Emily versus Yasmin in the nerd off. Um, now, what really bummed me out when I watched episode 6, and I'll get to episode 6 properly in a minute, but 
the way they opened it up with a clip um, just showing that Yasmin did, you know, the lost, but showing all of the passes made it look like she got absolutely demolished. Saw so Yasmin take a nosedive in the Nerdle. Pass. Dinner. Pass. That's not what happened. It was the closest nerd off we've had by a mile. They both scored, ultimately, the exact same number of points. Um, I think Emily came up on top in the, uh, the sort of um, general round, and then in the, the rounds where they'd chosen the topics for each other, I think Yasmin gained her two points back that Emily had ahead of her, and then they were on even footing, and then it was a tiebreaker question, which they've never had to do on the show. They called it the killer question. Weird. So, the editors, let's not let's not cheat here, and let's not make it look like, you know, she got absolutely demolished by Emily because it was really hard fought, and I, she she you know she was a trooper, but she did get eliminated sadly. So my black marker is around here somewhere. <gasps> the black marker is gone. Who has stolen my black marker? I've got a second one, but it doesn't work as well. Disastrous, disastrous. But with my oh, that one works better than the one I've been using. Well, that's... I don't know if that's fortuitous or annoying. Okay, um, well, there you go. I got my pens mixed up, clearly. But yeah, Yasmin, unfortunately, eliminated from the game um, after that. Favourite moment, by far, from episode five has to be the surreptitious crotch pillow, um, where, when sitting down, Mark decided to uh, save his, you know, pride and dignity by um, surreptitiously sliding a pillow over his, uh, over his crotch. In spandex, I think that's a good idea. Very sensible. Worth noting as well that Curtis once again were coached the uh, the winner, and they made a little montage to suggest that Curtis and Emily had a little thing going on, um, which they played up in the next episode, which was um, a sort of maths based challenge. So episode six was a maths based challenge where they had to calculate um, two objects falling through panes of glass and calculate how many panes of glass they would. Um, shattered through based on you know gravitational force, the weight. They did all the, they had to do all the sums basically, um, and the most accurate team would win. Um, now, team defenders of time were immediately instructed to to choose someone to go over to team evil, um, and that looked like it was going to be a big like who'd want to change teams from the team that's been winning every week. Um, and besides, defenders of time. We're super happy to have Curtis for a math challenge. He's the only person really left that has um, proper expertise in maths. Maths is Curtis's thing. It's been his thing since the first four minutes of the first episode. Um, you know, so putting him in that situation was was interesting because essentially he remembered, and I and I mentioned this last week. Matt's tactics backfired terribly because he tried to throw Curtis under the bus. Curtis remembered this. It all came out and Curtis defected. Now, you didn't think I'd be prepared for this, but BAM! Look at that. Curtis defected to um, Team Evil and has now left the Defenders of Time for good. Ooh. I say for good. This episode is the last episode they work in teams. For a week. So the challenge itself, the Nerd War, went somewhat predictably. Without their mathematician, the Defenders of Time decided to guesstimate their answers without doing any actual maths because in I think Matt, the way Matt described it was maths is really boring uh, and he didn't want to do it. So they chose not to do maths but just to take guesses how many panes of glass the objects would smash through. Um, which well, it wasn't actually as bad a strategy as you'd imagine because they actually looked, they were ahead for the for for a minute in that task, um, but naturally, Curtis and his maths got them way closer on the second part of the task, and uh, and the Team Evil for once won. Um, see, Curtis have noticed again the trend here. Not only has Curtis been coaching all the winners in the nerd offs, but he's very rarely been on the losing side of a um, nerd war. Um, very rare. I think once, maybe, in the whole show has he been on the losing side of a nerd war. I, I'd have to go back and check, but it's it's not happening often for Curtis. Once again, as I said last week, sleeper. Sleeper. Um, so this week, then, uh, there's a big fuss made about Mark celebrating the victory, but I, I'm sorry, I think they, I think team uh, Defenders of Time were just a bit bitter for having lost. They came across very bitter about the whole thing, making fun of Mark's celebration. It, it, he's you know his team have lost several weeks on the trot 
I'd probably lose my my, my shit too if I won. Um, after several weeks on the thing, you know, all right, it wasn't the most it wasn't the most dignified of celebrations, but it certainly wasn't worth their um, over the top mocking or their constant comments about it. Um, I just they just came across bitter in my opinion that they lost. Um, that's uh, again, I've used the word came across there because I don't know if they were bitter. That's just how it seemed on the television. So then it became a matter of who is going into the nerd off. Now, I mean. <laughs> I don't understand how this happens, but it happened last week as well, where the, the, the arguably the strongest player somehow avoided the nerd uh, nerd off uh, when it was Yasmin, Emily, and Mark. We had three people here, the strongest of which clearly I would say in, in Matt, the person you want to get out of the competition if you're on this team is arguably Matt now. Um, no offense, of course, to Kerry or Kenny. But that's not how it went down. Team Evil chose Kerry. And Team Defenders of Time chose Kenny. Matt dodged a bullet. Unfortunately, Curtis goes five for five, and we lose Kerry, who I was. Um, well, I couldn't decide if I was sad. I couldn't decide if I was sad to see Kerry go, and it's not that I didn't like her or anything like that. She just, I don't feel like she added a lot. She had a really great sort of storyline in the episode where she was overcoming um, speaking, you know, her sort of public speaking fears. Um, I say storyline. These are real people going through real things. But, you know, that was a really good sort of um, bit of television. But otherwise, she hadn't really brought a lot to the show. Um, if I'm being honest, she was one of the quieter players. So I don't know if I'll... I'll certainly feel Yasmin's loss a lot more than I'll feel Kerry's loss. And that's because Yasmin brought both drama and entertainment and, like, uh, dedication and, like, just some of the best lines from the show. Um, you know, the reluctant cool beans and things like that, just just genius moments. Um, so I definitely will feel the loss of Yasmin a lot more than I'll feel the loss of Kerry when it comes to the final two episodes. But that's the standings. But now, team team game's over. Um, teams are gone. I don't even know if I'll need the board next week. That's... No, I'll keep the board. I can't not have the board. Gotta keep the board. Favorite moment for the uh, for that episode? It's got to be the song, hasn't it? I mean, I could pick up a little moment where someone said something funny or whatever, but I mean, it's got to be the song, hasn't it? The song, the best moment of the episode by far. It was just uh, it was very well written. Uh, it was quite catchy. It was uh, the, the, it was yeah. It was uh, they clearly cut a big chunk out of it because it because it <laughs> told the beginning the first few episodes worth of story and then sort of stopped. Um, I'm sure there was more to it. Maybe one day. Uh, Mark and Matt will, uh, will, will do a video of the, the full song um, or they'll just release it that would be nice um, so yeah that's everything for this week um, hopefully I didn't ramble quite as long as last um, next time you see me will be in two weeks time for another video like this uh, I'm running out of hats now so not quite sure what I'm going to do it's a nail biting situation I'm sure you're all on the edge of your seats but I will see you in two weeks time for discussion of the final two episodes of King of the Nerds UK Told you it works better with the lights off.